Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Thanks for joining me in this live event tonight. Um, I don't do a ton of lives anymore, and you can tell, like, I just got done playing baseball. And I know this letter came out, like, really recently, like today, I think it was today or yesterday, and uh, I haven't really read it through. I did one full reading through just because I really wanted to just, I was at baseball and I had to read it through, but um, damn, I'm pissed. Like, I think a lot of people are pissed about this whole thing. Um, and it was, it, it can't be mistaken that Bertolino was the one that released this, this letter, right? So, um, there's a lot of stuff we're talking about tonight. We're going to read the letter. We're going to break it down. We're going to see if what he's saying is plausible. We've got some history we can look at. We've got the, we've got the, I've got the, the locations of everything and we're going to look at it. So, um, we got another, apparently there's another letter out there. I got a couple articles I want to read that his mom might've written him a letter that said burn after reading and they have that. So there's some, there's some things we need to look at, but thank you for joining me. Where's everybody from tonight? Thanks for being here. I, I love having these conversations with you because a lot of you have some really great things to say. Um, and it's just, it's, it's an important conversation. It's like common sense conversations. And I love that we all get to kind of have a, a, a thing to say here. So glad you guys are here. Dallas, Philly, awesome. Lots of people from all over the place. This, like, I know that this case is going into court and that the Brian Laundry's parents weren't there. Like, we know they weren't going to show up anyway. That's just one more reason that they're a bunch of cowardly assholes. Okay. They're just cowards. Straight up, can't even just be there. Can't look anybody in the eye if they're not guilty at all. They, well, they're they're not showing any remorse whatsoever on anything. So, I'm pissed about this because this letter is not cool. Let me find it here quickly and I'll open it up for you guys. Share it on the screen here. Mm -hmm. Okay, share. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna read this together. Then we're going to kind of break it down after my first reading I did today. I'm going to read it with you guys and we'll break it down a little bit. So thank you for being here, everybody. Just make it, you're all here. Yep. 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 Awesome. Wow. Lots of people. Excellent. <clears throat> Again, thanks for being here. Sorry my face looks like this, but when I play baseball, like I just, I constantly write this sweat off my face and like makes my face puff out but it is what it is you know it's not filler or anything i promise also my allergies are acting like crazy because it was so dusty my boogers were the size of small baseballs okay so here we go here's a letter that was written and it uh, says this is gabby and i guess it's written to her even though he killed her so whatever okay i wish i was right at your side I wish I could be talking to you right now. I'd be going through every memory we've made, getting even more excited for the future. I can't live without you. I've lost every day we could have spent together. Right, okay, sorry. Right at the top, this guy is saying I, 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 and he literally killed somebody. He killed somebody, and he's making it about himself. Don't get past that. Don't let it sneak past your brain that that's narcissistic behavior. This guy... He's talking about himself and how much he's sad. He literally killed this person. Holy shit. Okay. Every holiday, I'll never get to play with something again. Never go hiking with TJ. I loved you more than anything. I can't bear to look at our photos to recall great times because it is why I cannot go on. I, 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 me, I, I, I'm an asshole. That's what it should have said. When I close my eyes, I will think of laying on the roof of the van, falling asleep to the sight of a meteor shower at the Crystal Geyser. I will always love you. If you are reading Gab's journal, looking at the photos from our life together, flipping through old cards, you wouldn't want to live a day without her. I guess he's writing this to the people reading. Knowing that every day you'll wake up without her, you wouldn't want to wake up. I'm sorry to everyone this will affect. <sighs> Gabby was the love of my life, but I know adored by many i'm so very sorry to her family because i love them i'd consider her younger siblings my best of friends i am sorry to my family this is a shock to them as well as a terrible grief what a dick sorry man they loved as much if not more than me no they loved their daughter more than you brian 
Yeah. Because you know why we know that? Because you killed her. A new daughter to my mother. Yeah. You don't get to say that either after what your parents did and held from you, from her parents and everybody else. You don't get to say that. What a dick face. This guy's memory does not get to live on with any grace whatsoever or any forgiveness as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, please do not make this harder for them. That's what he's saying to, about his parents. Really? And again, imagine he, we know he wrote this after every, all the shit went down. There's protesters outside of his house. We know he wrote this stuff when this stuff was going on. This occurred as unexpectedly. This occurred as an unexpected tragedy. What the murder? Yeah, the, Ilya is right. This is what, sorry, this is what an actual psychopath is. He probably literally believed he didn't do anything. Yeah, sorry. Rushing back to our car. So this is where I guess he's coming. This is where he, he, he doesn't start a new paragraph or anything. He just goes right into the explanation, right? So he goes, rushing back to our car, trying to cross the streams of Spread Creek before it got too dark to see, too cold, okay? I hear a splash and a scream. I could barely see. I couldn't find her for a moment. Shouted her name. I found her breathing heavily, gasping my name. She was freezing cold. We had just came from the blazing hot national parks in Utah. The temperature had dropped to freezing and she was soaking wet. Remember he said this, okay, everybody? Remember he said the temperature had dropped to freezing. I carried her as far as I could down the stream towards the car stumbling exhausted in shock when my knees buckled and knew i couldn't safely carry her this guy oh my god i'm so angry that he gets to lie even though he's gonna kill himself he still lies i started a fire and spooned her as close to the heat she was so thin had already been freezing too long i couldn't at the time realize that i should have started the fire at first but i wanted her out of the cold back to the car from where I started the fire, I had no idea how far the car might be. Only knew it was across the creek. Okay? Keep, remember this, everybody. When I pulled Gabby out of the water, she couldn't tell me what hurt. She had a small bump on her forehead that eventually got larger. But you can't see anything, Brian. You can't see anything. It's pitch black. Right? There's too much going on here. You're in the water, but you have a fire going? Okay. Her feet hurt, her wrist hurt, but she was freezing, shaking violently. While carrying her, she continually made sounds of pain. Laying next to her, she said little, little lapsing between violent shakes, gasping in pain, begging for an end to her pain. She would fall asleep, and I would shake her awake, fearing she shouldn't close her eyes if she had a concussion. She would wake in pain, start the whole painful cycle again, while furious that I was the one waking her. She wouldn't let me try to cross the creek thought like me that this fire would go out in her sleep and she'd freeze i don't know the extent of gabby's injuries only that she was in extreme pain i ended her life i ended her life also known as i murdered her okay don't let him get away with that we'll get to this in a second okay sparkly glitter pants um i thought it was merciful that it was what she wanted. But I see now all the mistakes I made. I panicked. I was in shock. But from the moment I decided to look to, from the moment I decided took away her pain, I knew I couldn't go on without her. Douche. I rushed home to spend any time I had left with my family. I wanted to drive north and let James or TJ kill me, but I wouldn't want them to spend time in jail over my mistake. It's not a mistake. You murdered somebody. Even though I'm sure they would have liked to, I'm ending my life not because of fear of punishment, but rather I can't stand to live another day without her. I've lost out whole, I've lost our whole future together. Every moment we could have cherished, I'm sorry for everyone's loss. Please do not make life harder for my family. Get effed, Brian. Your parents, their life should be hard. They lost a son and a daughter. They didn't lose a daughter. That wasn't their daughter. I, I want to say the F word, but I can't blame it. So F you. F you for saying that. They didn't lose a daughter. The most wonderful girl in the world, Gabby, I'm sorry. I've killed myself by this creek in the hopes that animals may tear me apart, that it may make some of her family happy. Please pick all of my thing. Please pick up all of my things. Gabby hated people who litter. Okay. Now we got all that, right? A few things that we're going to go over here in a second. One is that he's trying to alleviate his parents, whatever the shit that they're going through. And no. How about this, Brian? While you're in hell... 
I'm going to give you the middle finger and tell you to go F yourself. Because no, your parents are bad. They're bad people. They're disgusting. They can't even show their face in the court proceedings about this whole thing. They didn't say a word to anybody. They went about gardening. You guys went camping. Now we know for sure by your letter that you went to spend the remaining time with your family and they knew. If anything, this letter proves that your parents knew. Okay? Yeah, this is it. The lack of sympathy or empathy is outstanding. Laura's right. This guy is just, holy moly, can't believe it. So a couple of things, again, stand out. The fact that he is, he's diminishing what he did and he's like, oh, it was a mistake, right? Okay, so here's another thing I want to show you. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I can get that up for you here. I want you guys to take a look at this, okay? So this is where, like, people have, like, dug and found exactly, like, the, the to right down to the freaking minuscule, you know, inch of where this van was parked. So this is where the van was parked right here, okay, everybody? And so Brian is saying they crossed this creek, which is, is barely a creek, by the way. It even looks like you can get across this creek minimally to where her body was found. One space right here, boom, boom. And then there's no other water till you get to the van, right? If you just did this, went up this way, right here, and crossed, even here, there's a crossing, and then a tiny bit of water here. Her body's found here. So what, what this shows to me, I wish I could get a little bit closer, but what this shows to me is that I think he's lying here because if she's soaking wet, like from what, right? Like if they were up here hiking and stuff like that, came down here, Maybe she stepped into this water here, maybe, but how did she end up dead here? Right? Yeah, this is this is another thing. Christine's right. Literally acting like he did her a favor. Put her out of his, her misery because she was cold, he says. She was cold. But I'm telling you guys, the distance between this, look at this tree, okay? Look at these trees. The distance between here and the van, and I'm not even kidding you, five-minute walk. A five-minute walk. So if you honestly believe that your girl, the love of your life, the person you can't live without forever and ever and ever, okay? If you can't live without her and she's the most important thing to you, you know what you do? You leave her there for a few minutes with a fire. You go find your van and you you get shit done, okay? I don't believe it for a second. His only option was to kill her? And you expect people to believe that? Yes, and the tent impressions, he had equipment. He had equipment, exactly. We know he was there. There was a fire. Again, he he just made up with this. What, what pisses me off is that he didn't have to lie. He's already going to kill himself, according to him, okay? Why lie? Why would you lie? So your last remaining thing that you're going to leave on earth, the legacy you're going to leave is a lie after you've murdered somebody? You think there's redemption after that? Sorry, there's not. He wasn't exactly, he wasn't counting on the public knowing as much as they did. That's absolutely true, right? Another thing I want to I want to point out real quick, guys, is this. Let's see if we can get it. So he talks about it being freezing that night, right? Well, why don't we take a look at August 29th, which is the night I think that he did it. It could have been August 20, it was August 29th. Like there's just no, there's no way around it. That's, it's August 29th in my opinion. It makes the most sense. He left right at that moment. He was up at the thing. August 29th is the date I'm going with. Okay. Unless I'm completely mistaken and there's something on record that's that's saying it's not August 29th. Is there anybody before I show you this that says it's not August 29th? Is there any record saying that it wasn't August 29th? That's right. He didn't even try to save her. Lit a fire and then killed her. Like what did I don't I can't believe this. I think that Katie might be onto something here. His mom told him to fabricate the BS story. If that letter comes out where she says burn after reading, that might be what it is. And only to save her and her husband's ass. That's why she told him to, to write this. Oh, we know. She, yeah, we're going to go over that in a second, Ava. Anyway, I'm going with August 29th. 
I might be corrected later. But Tiffany, no, August 27th, they were, they were found, they had an argument at the restaurant. It wasn't the 27th. It could have been the 28th, but I'm I'm, I'm thinking it's the 29th because it makes sense that he left right on the 29th. Soon as he did it, got in the van and he left. That's what I'm saying. So I could be wrong. I'm just saying I could be wrong. So let's take a look at August 29th weather. August 29th, 2021 at Grand Teton National Park. Okay, he said it was freezing. Don't forget, guys, this is August. August in the north, and I'm in the north, okay, is still hot as balls. Okay, hot as balls. So right here at the peak, at the time that 4.56 p.m., the peak was 25.6 Celsius, guys, which is about, um, I don't know how to, 25 Celsius is about, 87 88 degrees fahrenheit okay it's pretty warm right it's hot it's hot 25.6 degrees is a nice hot day if there's no breeze it's hot okay so let's say for, for he's saying it's, it gets dark um around nine o'clock in august in the summer in the north so you're going about nine o'clock it gets down the lowest the lowest it gets down to possibly okay is 7.8 degrees celsius okay alexa what's 7.8 degrees celsius in fahrenheit 7.8 degrees celsius is 46.04 degrees fahrenheit so it was 46.4 degrees fahrenheit look i know it's not the most warm but that's not freezing okay it's not freezing and you can survive in that weather especially if you're a five minute walk from your van also why doesn't brian tell us where they were going why were you there till it was too dark? You're five minutes away from your van. I don't believe you, okay? I believe that you killed her and drug her there. That's what I believe because you're five minutes away. You're trying to tell us you got lost five minutes away from your van? I don't believe you. These people who've been living in a van and hiking and living off the grid and doing all this all of a sudden you're just you're terrible at finding your way back i don't believe you plus you don't carry a flashlight you're a you're a skilled hiker you you're a skilled hiker we know he is right the water temperature in late august especially if it was 25 25.6 degrees celsius at, a, at the peak that day though that's a small creek the creek would not be that cold i'm telling you it wouldn't be that cold because it's shallow water so there's, I can't see it being freezing ice cold water in August. Okay. It's not going to be, it's not going to be like you step in and you die. I'm sorry. It's not, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sabrina has got it. He did all of this. He wrote this letter, but still used her phone to text her family as he pretended to be her. Make it make sense. He stole her money, used her credit card, took her van, went silent. Why? If this was a big accident, Brian, why? It's the, None of it makes sense. He's lying. We have proof of the weather. We have proof of the distance. All of this stuff doesn't make sense. Yeah. You don't, if you're going to put someone out of their misery, quote unquote, do you really, really strangle them? Because let's take a look at this. All right. Get out of here. Here we go. FBI Denver provides final investigative update on Gabrielle Petito case. Yesterday, the family of Gabrielle Petito met with the FBI. All logical investigative steps have been concluded in this case, said FBI Denver Division Special Agent. The investigation did not identify any other individuals other than Brian Laundrie directly involved in the tragic death of Jab Gabby Petito. The FBI's primary focus of the investigation was to bring justice, blah, blah, blah. The FBI opened the investigation on September 19th, 2021. The search team located... Oh, I'm getting trying to get into it. So, the Teton County Coroner's Office subsequently concluded Miss Petito died of blunt force injuries to the head and neck with manual strangulation. While law enforcement investigated all logical leads, the investigation... Quickly focused on the last person to believe seeing live with her. There you have it, folks. She didn't just fall on her head. This guy tried to kill her with rocks, blunt force trauma to her head and neck, and neck, and then manual strangulation. Okay? You didn't, you went, you've ever fallen? You fall on your neck? 
I'm sorry. And your head? You have a bump on your head and your neck? How is that possible? How is it possible you fell on your neck and head? Front and neck. Okay, unless, unless, I mean, you unless you fell here, how would you fall? And, bleh, it doesn't work that way. This guy couldn't put her out with rocks and just finished her off by strangling her because she was making noises. That's it. Tried to take her out with rocks, but he's too big of a pussy. And then she kept making noises, probably screaming, and then he put her out of her misery. I mean, that's, they're saying it the nice way, but this guy doesn't deserve to be sitting here and be like, oh, I was, I was, did her a favor. I was being nice to her. I, you know, my bad. I'm showing you guys how far away they were. Five minute walk max. Okay. They are, they are very, very, very good at hiking and living off the grid and doing all that stuff at camping. So I don't believe that. Like you didn't have a flashlight. You don't have a phone in your pocket with a flashlight on it. I don't believe you. Um, you have, uh, I think it was Target and Disney said that there was camping equipment, pegs and tents that was set up there. Okay. You have the opportunity to start a fire. How does that mean you have equipment with you? A backpack on perhaps. So you've got a backpack on full of equipment, start fires and everything. You start a fire and you, this woman that you love most in your life, you don't just go find your van five minutes away. Really? So. I don't know if they're going to be forced to testify, Lindsay, friends, uh, friends. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't show up to court. What a bunch of assholes. He even set rocks around the fire pit and who has time to do this in an emergency thinks she's dying. Let me set up a fire pit first. Yeah. Strangulation is not something that's just like, I'm, I'm helping you here. It's just not how you do that. Like, I don't know, but I'm just saying that's, you're right. This, everybody knows that there's just no possible way that what he's saying is truthful. Just unbelievable. I wonder if they've done a straight handwriting. I, 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 I hope they did. We just have to believe that that's, you know, a step that they did take. So we know, I hope so. Throttling, unfortunately, Lindsay is this. You're throttling their head and neck. You're literally, it's not just holding, right? And putting them out, but you're literally doing this. That's throttling. So none of us believe Brian. He's a dick. And again, let me show you this other thing real quick. WFLA was covering it. So here it says, according to Riley, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, there's some pretty extreme, uh, here we go. I find it ironic that Mr. B Mr. B Bertolino says he was in full transparency releasing this. Well, someone should ask him why he doesn't release the entire notebook. Yeah. But more importantly, ask him why he doesn't release Roberta Laundrie's letter to her son. Okay? Riley claims the letter appears to be written by Brian's mother, Roberta Laundrie, to her son after Gabby Petito was killed. Bertolino has that letter, according to Riley, who said he doesn't have a copy. There's some pretty extreme things she said in that letter. Without having the letter here to quote it, I don't want to say, but I will simply tell you that there's some pretty extreme things that were contained within that letter, Riley said. According to Riley, the letter is undated, so it's not entirely clear when it was written. However, Riley claims it was certainly based on what's contained within the letter. It would appear as though the letter were written after Gabby was killed and before Brian took his life. I will tell you, by the way, that on the envelope that contained the letter, the words burn after you read this were written, Riley said. So his mom wrote him a letter, burn after reading this. Why? Why burn after reading this? No, you can't, Emma. We're not going to see that letter. Guarantee you we're not going to see that letter. Not going to see it. Yeah, it's a good idea, Aaron. Let's take a look. Uh, moon... Um, what do you call that? Phases? History. August 29th, 2021. So according to Moonigan, Moonigant, I was half moon that night. So it wasn't that there was no moon because you know, in a night where it's super dark, right? Um, 
You know when the when the moon is super dark, right? When it's on at its at its lowest here, it gets really really dark, especially if you're in a place that doesn't have any lights anywhere. So it would be so dark, you'd only you'd see the stars. But if you've got a half moon, you got light. You got some light for sure. So that was a good find there, Aaron. That's a really good up. That's a good observation. There's definitely some light. Plus, don't forget they started a fire. Brian's got a backpack full of gear. He's got a flashlight. And if he doesn't, he's got a phone with a flashlight. The guy literally started a damn fire. Okay, get a damn branch, light it, and walk. I don't care. Yeah, the creek is very shallow. If you look at Brian Ensign's video, the water reached his ankles. That's how also I know there's no way that she just like fell head first into over a head of water and she was freezing, okay? Also, the water wouldn't be freezing. It's August, guys. It's like the peak of the summer. So the water is shallow. It's probably warm. The water is literally probably warm. So I don't believe it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it's Steph says, no matter the contents of Roberta's letter to Brian, it does not bode well for her to have written a note that says burn after reading. Exactly. Yeah, this Midnight Marie says it right. Could have walked quicker to the van versus making a fire. Not only did he make a fire, but he set up a tent and he had a, a fire pit. It doesn't make sense, everybody. Here's my conjecture. Brian took her camping across that thing, away from all the, the road, because you wouldn't be able to see because it's off the grid, nobody could see it, with the express intent to do what he did there. That's And then he just made up the lie. What's up, Will? Good to see you, buddy. T to make the lie up. Like, he... If you're going to off yourself, and you have the opportunity to make things right, and you lie, it just makes you worse, dude. Brian sounds like a textbook narcissist. Up until his very last hour, he constructed a story to make it sound like he was somehow rogue for ending her life. What a dick face. Yep. Even Okay, so Andrea, you're on the same kind of wavelength, I think, as I'm about to go here. So now let's take a look at some alternatives that could have happened here. If Brian didn't write the letter, how would they have gotten it? We know how they would have gotten it because when his dad went right to the densest part of that forest and was like, I'm going to take a right turn right here into this thick brush. Oh, look, I found his bag. I'm telling you, it's plausible that he put that damn notebook in that bag. We it's it's even if you don't think even if you think I'm wearing a tinfoil hat. OK, why do you think it's way out of left field to think something like that, considering what we know about his parents? Why would you think that? Right? Where did he get the gun? What? Sorry. Thanks, Christine. Appreciate it. Um, so I know people are like, oh, you know, it's Occam's Razor, right? Well, Occam's Razor to me is that these people had people protesting on their lawn and needed to get this over with. So Occam's Razor, the simplest example, the simplest, you know, explanation makes sense to me. They found the bag. He went into the woods. No one saw what he did with that bag when he went to the woods. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Annie. So there's too much here where he, again, so I'm, we've already covered, we've already dismantled all of Brian's lies from his letter. Okay. The night was not freezing. The day wasn't freezing either. It was quite warm. Actually, the weather that day, um, weather, 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 weather. Sorry, guys. The weather that day was... It doesn't say. I, uh, oh, hourly temperature. It was hot. And it was clear. No cloud cover. No cloud cover. So I just wanted to make sure we got that too. Don't forget too, guys, it had to have been, do we remember when Brian was hitchhiking? Can we go back to that? I know I have a bad memory for that stuff and I don't want to look back to my old videos. Brian was hitchhiking. Was it August 29th he was hitchhiking?
So what? There's another version of on this story. Brian typed on his device. Gabby's parents lawyer's words. Okay. <laughs> it's true. About Brian's parents? No. By them, you mean? Yeah, but it's weird, Will. What he, why want to, you're about to off yourself. Why? Who cares what you look like after that? That's really weird to me. Yeah, we got that. We read that part. The letter from Roberta was found in their house, but was OG in the van? I first saw she gave it to him when she came home to clean out the storage unit. But why would, she, why would they keep the letter if she told him to burn it after reading? Why would she keep that? So, okay, I'm getting back. Sorry, I'm getting off track. So he was hitchhiking August 29th. We remember that he was acting crazy. He's acting a fool. Think about this for a second, everybody. This could have been done during the day is what I'm telling you. because Or early evening when it was still light outside around 8.39. Still light outside. It's about dark about 9.45 in August. Up, up in the summer, okay? So if he was hitchhiking August 29th, he might have just done that and took off. Yeah, I agree with you, Annie. His parents convinced him to write that so that it would take the heat off them. Imagine being that disgusting, and that greedy, and just selfish that you're like, okay, you're going to off yourself. Make sure in your letter you alleviate the blame on us. Oh, he kept it. She didn't know. Okay. Well, I mean, Laura, we don't know if he actually wrote it. We don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping the FBI is smart enough to be like, well, let's just compare the writing and get a professional because that's easy to do. Are we sure his parents didn't help commit? Maybe. It also proves that they just let him off, let him off himself. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They knew he was going to go do it. Will's right. They knew he was going to go do it and they just let him do it. If you're a loving parent, I'm sorry. You're going to be like, no, you know what? You're going to face the consequence of your actions. Maybe you'll still have a life in 50 years. You'll get out of prison in 50 years, serve your time, you'll still be alive. Imagine knowing he's going to do it and just letting him do it. And then using that moment to tell him to write something to get you off the hook. This is it. We talked about this. Why didn't you try harder to get her to the van? He loved her so much. Instead, he throttled her and killed her. It doesn't, nobody believes it. That's why it's like, does Bertolino think people are going to believe this shit? It's insane. I don't think they can be arrested, but I think they need to be held accountable for what they did, for sure. I don't know if they did anything criminal, but they definitely are disgusting. Anyway, I want to go back to the the night that... The, the most important night, I think, obviously, is the 29th. Is why I believe he did on the 29th. Is because of the way he was acting. When he went up to that, that station... Remember, he was at that camping station with the showers and the phone, and we looked at it. There's a phone up there where he likely made a call from a payphone right after he did this because he's panicking. This is what I said from the beginning, everybody, and I still stand by this. He went up to that place, he made his calls, got some cash, then hitchhiked back down to create, and we know this, to create a alibi, right? Because she might have just been found with a head thing and someone, oh, she just died hiking, right? That's probably what he was going to think. And I wasn't there because I was hitchhiking. I was up at the place, right? From the beginning, we were saying this. And then the people that drove him dropped him off. He was acting a fool and weirdly weird and strange. He got out and went the other way and another lady dropped him off near the campsite, right? It's mind-blowing. And the next day, Red, White, and Bethune or whatever they were drove by and the van door closed. He saw them coming. 
That was the 30th, right? Was I, am I correct that that was the 30th? Thank you, Mallory. The lawyer said that in the letter, Roberta offered to assist him with something. Okay. Wow. The judge, the judge better let this go to trial. Like, absolutely. Well, Annie does real, uh, true crime. I do real crime. So it's, we're not, we're not com composatic compatible. Just kidding. Annie's better. All right. So is it, wait. The 27th is when he was hitchhiking? Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. Red, white, and bathroom saw Saturday evening around 6 p.m. Is the Saturday the 28th? Twenty eighth to Saturday. Okay, Sunday. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Vanessa. I appreciate that. So the twenty the twenty eighth is the Saturday. Hitchhiking was definitely twenty I I I know I hate I know I can second guess myself because I have a bad memory, but I thought it was the 29th as well. That's what I thought too. Saturday's the twenty eighth. He's hitchhiking the twenty ninth. He's home on Monday. Or he's home on the thirty no, he's home in September two days later. Thank you, Caroline. Yes, exactly. So hear this out, Caroline. If I'm right, and I don't know if I am, and I guess I'll never know, if he killed Gabby Petito in the afternoon at the height of whatever and then went hitchhiking, it that there's okay. This is why I think this makes the most sense. Because he was acting strange during this whole debacle. So either he did it on the twenty eighth, the night of the twenty eighth, and then made his way up. And then got back on the night of the 29th is the only way I could think that this could be possible. Or he did it on the 29th during the day and then went up. This is true. They said he did not look that dirty. But also remember when he went up to that place, he probably had his pack and he could have had a shower there. Right? He could have been... On the phone, had a shower, got something to eat, and then hitchhiked back. And imagine he walked that distance. We actually did a thing where we showed how far the hike would have been. He would have been totally exhausted and maybe at his wit's end. So he said, look, I can't hike back. I need to hitchhike. He had no other options, right? So maybe he's so dead tired. The plan is in place after he gets off the call from his lawyer, his parents. The plan's in place. And they're like, you need to get out of there now. Get back as fast as possible. Get out of there, right? And so he has no choice but to hitchhike. Because there's no way he did it after, right? There's no way he's acting a crazy fool after the hitchhiking. It's had to have happened before. Yes, showering before hitchhiking to clean off the evidence. Blood, everything else. You know that's true. So he doesn't, that makes a lot of sense, Heather. He's clean. He's not dirty. Smells fine because he had a shower to clean off the evidence. That makes a hundred percent sense, Heather. Great one. And he takes her money. Yeah. Carolyn Rose. They said he didn't have much with him and he looked like a red flag to the people that picked him up. Yep. That's true. But was clean. Yeah. He took the van to the back to Florida after the call. The only makes sense is the call, right? And if you call from a payphone, I'm not sure you could trace that. Right? Here's why I don't think he took the van to the shower because I think he did the thing and then panicked and took off. Didn't want to get back to the van. Took off. He's like, okay, I need to create an alibi. So what I'm going to do, I was hiking. I was hiking. So I don't know what happened to Gabby. Could have been somebody else. I was off doing my own thing. And then I got back and she was gone. Remember, we talked about that, trying to create the alibi, which is why he texted her mom too. He was, if he's, trying to tell everybody he did this to help her. Why does he all the shady shit happen afterwards? The weirdest thing is if you just killed someone, why would you be so sketch? Parents say nothing. Van came back. There's, there's too many layers of the lies. Exactly. It's just compounding.
Didn't want to leave. Oh, Jeff. Yes. This, this is another reason why it makes sense that he did it and then took off. He has all the evidence on him, right? So he takes off, showers at that place, calls on the phone, hitchhikes back. He's now clean and cannot drag any evidence back to him with the van. Excellent point. Very, very good point. Probably didn't want to lose the spot they parked in. Maybe scared he wouldn't find her again. Very good point too, right? He's That's the marker he knows where to go from. If he loses that, I don't know. Yeah. See, this is a point. A lot of people, I don't think he's smart enough to create an alibi. That's why I think when he got off the phone at that place up there, everything was solidified in the plan. Right? Who knows how long he was on the phone up there for? So he didn't get back till night, right? Get a shower, did everything he needed to do, gets on the phone, makes a plan, gets back. He ditched the flip-flops outside of the van. Yep. I don't think the parents can be charged with this. There's a rule in Florida, I think. EM says, I'm late. Not sure if it was said, but the main reporter of this case tweeted early today that he visited the site of the crime and the cell phone service was perfect. Why didn't Brian call the police? Oh, Are you talking about Brian Enton visited the site and there was service? Yeah, exactly. These guys are, these people are way smarter than me, Will. That's for sure. That's why I like having these common sense conversations. EM, are you, did Brian Enton say that he had cell service at the spot where they found her? No, see, Andrea, yes, if, if it was premeditated and it was planned out, I don't think so, but it does make sense that either his battery's dead, doesn't have it with him, or, again, had this all planned out and didn't call the police because he, why would he? He was trying to do this. It wasn't an accident. That's why he didn't call the police. So if Brian Enton says that he has service there and it's perfect, that makes a ton of sense that w- why didn't you call the police then? Exactly. Because these guys are never without her phone. And you know that she's never without her phone. Literally, they're documenting their entire trip on Instagram. You think she's going to be without her phone? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Why wouldn't he say that in the letter? He leaves so much out so that we can make up our own shit. So he doesn't, he doesn't make any sense, which is why I don't even believe that he wrote this letter because it, it sounds like someone else wrote the letter based on what they think happened, right? Or what could have happened. It doesn't even sound like he wrote, it doesn't even sound like you read the letter itself. It doesn't sound like he was there in the moment doesn't sound like it sounds like the person was outside of that does that make sense like it doesn't sound like they were there right because if you look at the water you look at the place they make it sound way worse than what we see okay so it sounds like it was i mean that's why i don't believe it's i think it's a lie anyway but it also sounds like something like they talked to brian about this whole thing and then they wrote something about it it's all of course it's all speculation of course But here's the thing. Yeah, maybe the fight. But here's the thing. We know he texted the parents after, so he has her phone. Do that with what what you want. Exactly. Why did he text her parents' fiction? You know he had her phone. We know he did. So if Brian Enton says that there's service there, he has the phone. Could have called the police. Because she cracked when reporters questioned her on the law. Oh, that was a sister, yeah. Their sister still knows way more than we'll all know. What really happened at that restaurant could be key. I mean, it sounds like a major argument and it sounded like it would just, it escalated when they got back. That's what it sounds like. Because a lot of people think that after the argument at the restaurant, the 27th is when they went back and he did it on the 27th, which then leaves him two days before he even hikes up to the place. I don't think so. I think the guy was panicking at that point. Yeah, I don't think this letter was written by Brian. And if it was, I think it was coerced out of him by his parents to say this, say this, say this. Don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. Also, make sure you make sure to tell everybody to leave us alone. Right? Sorry, I'm getting thirsty.
her parents and the lawyer believes it the 27th. Now, now I've heard that too, but why do people b- believe that? Because the restaurant argument? Is that why people believe that? Because think about that for a second. If he did on the night of the 27th, which is Friday night, he's got all day on the 28th to think about what he did. She's sitting there on the 28th. He doesn't hitchhike up till the evening of the 20th, or he doesn't get up till he walks up to that place, which probably was the whole day on the 29th, hitchhikes back in the evening, then takes off on the 30th. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Too loud. Sorry, guys. Is that better? Did you guys hear everything I said? Sorry about that. Is it better? Okay, so I'm going to repeat what I just said. So if the if the 27th is the way that everybody thinks, fine. But how does it make sense that on the 28th he just chills at the campsite, then on the 29th hikes up to that place to have a shower and everything else, hitchhikes back the evening of the 29th, and then takes off on the 30th? How does it make sense that it's the 27th? Is that better? Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Who believes it's the 27th, and why do they believe it's the 27th? I'm not saying you're wrong. I just need to know what people are saying. If the lawyers think it, if the parents think it, I don't want to say, hey, you're wrong, but I want to know what they thought. Yeah, this is it too, Carla. They took a family camping trip. I'm sorry. When there's been a murder, you don't take a family camping trip. Sorry. (laughs) She wasn't buried, though. She wasn't. Someone remind me the texts that were sent on the 27th, because weren't there texts sent on the 30th as well? 28th at night makes more sense with the timeline. I agree with you. Right? Because he's got all day. I need to bring up this map. Let's bring up the map. It's time. It's map time. Okay. Oh, here it is. Sorry, I'm just looking for the name of that. Does anybody remember the name of that place he went up to? Uh, What was the name of that? Sorry. Yes, this text was about Stan, yeah. Honestly, Jojo, I think you're right. He was pissed when they got pulled over. This is where it all started. No doubt he thought she was going to spill everything. But at this point, I think he was just done, right? They were, he was, you're right. I think that set him off for sure. It is, I think, Heather, it's very possible they wrote the letter together during the camping trip. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then it would be in his writing, right? No, it's John Jackson Hole. It's like, um, it, it's, it's the place that the, the that he made the call from. What was it called? Oh man, what was it called? Coulter Bay Village. Not Jackson Hole, no. I think it was Coulter Bay, Coulter Bay Village, right? Okay, you got to see this. So, where is she found? Oh my gosh, it's just insane. Okay, he's hiking. Okay, where is she found? What's the name of the where? What's the name of the thing that they were found? 
where the van was found. The name of that street that was uh, not street the, uh, the 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 Snake River. Right. Clear Creek. No, it wasn't Clear Creek. Spread Creek. Okay. I got to show you this. Just because I want I want you guys to see this timeline thing, see if it makes sense to you. Okay. So there's Spread Creek, okay? Basically around this area. Okay? He would have had to. And don't forget that he's walking, everybody. Okay? He's walking. He doesn't have the van. He walks from Spread Creek right here all the way up to here. Okay, hold on. I'll put some directions in. Coulter Bay. Ha! Holy shit! Why couldn't he walk the other way? Okay, so here it is. I don't understand the trails. No, you gotta walk this way. It doesn't allow you to... It doesn't allow you to see it. Okay, so I'll just do it here. Sorry, I'm just, I should show you. So see this for a second. He he gets done with what he's doing, right? Here. It's 15.3 miles, right? And I mean, I imagine he could probably cut through some of this. That's But it's a, in a vehicle, it's a 26 minute drive. But if you're hiking t uh, 15 miles, you're talking, I don't know, how long does it take to walk 15 miles if you, if you take the roads? So if it's 26 minutes in a vehicle, what is it, three or four hours on foot? I don't know. We don't, also, we don't know if he hitchhiked there. So he said he'd been hiking for three days. It does not take three days to get 15 miles, 26 miles. So I don't believe that. It's, I, I, uh, it's 28th. At really really late at night or it's 29th during the day because he ends up up there hey Roni hey buddy if I click the walking guide to top look what happens I'll show you that's why it's pissing me off because I'm like there's no way if you click the hiking guy <laughs> shoot it takes you around like look where it takes you and it's 13 hours. So I don't understand why he wouldn't just walk the roads. Yeah, it was nice that night. This is also a space that we, we rarely talk about. We should talk about more. Why Brian makes a quick trip back, flies back to Florida. Like, no one talks about that. That's crazy. Getting rid of his cell phone. He, no, because he, he didn't have, he had her cell phone. They said he was clean when they picked him up. Yes, that's the thing. He had a shower at Coulter Bay Village. There was showers at, that's where he was. That's where he's making calls. So the thing is, yeah, Shelby, if you didn't want to be seen on the way up there, I get that. But why hitchhike back? Because he's seen on the way back. He had her cell phone, Sydney. That's how he's texting her mom. That's how he's driving back. He had her cell phone. And then we don't know what happened to it after that. He used her credit cards. Yes, Audra, that's why they, that's where they got him as like a, they didn't get him as they had him a person of interest about Gabby, but didn't have anything else on him. And they used the credit cards as the way to get him, like, get a warrant. Because they had to move stuff in or out of a storage unit. But why would they need him to fly all the way back to Florida? That Exactly. And they moved her stuff out of the house, everybody. Why? Right? It doesn't... There's so much here. They were never know because his parents 
just I don't know. Like, how do they live with them? How do you sleep at night, knowing that your son did what he did? You knew about it, and then you tri- and then you're like, I'm sorry. How do you sleep? Do they still live where they live, or have they moved? Yes, they did. Dropped them off at Jackson Hole, and another lady picked him up. And then he was getting all member. Remember, he was she was driving up to the up to the river, up to Spread Creek at the beginning of Spread Creek. She's like, "I'll drive you right to your van." And he freaked, got out of the moving car, and ran. Don't forget that. That little bit of information we often forget is one of the most important parts of this. Why was he freaking out so badly? Gets out of a moving vehicle on Spread Creek when she was ready to keep driving. He's like, "I got it." Gets out and runs. Come on now. Why does he run? They still live there. Are there people still out there protesting? This is insanity. Yeah, he flipped when she tried to take him right to the van. Why? Could it be that she was murdered in the van and then he didn't want her to see that? And then took her out of the van, dragged her up to where he was left at, started a fire or whatever, and then took off. That's another thing that could have happened. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. And it just keeps getting crazier. Because they release this letter that gives us more questions than answers. And it's just full of bullshit because we just... Proved him wrong just with Google. Hoping the hoping the court proceedings, they're bringing this shit up. Like, hey, look, he said it was freezing. No, it wasn't. Here's the proof. <laughs> right? There's too many holes. Was she in the van the whole time he's hitchhiking? Exactly, Carolyn. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think it was this accident that happened up, up past the creek. I think it happened in the van. He took her out of the van up there to bury her, do whatever he needed to do and wanted to make it look like an accident, right? That's what I'm thinking. That's why in the morning of the the Bethunes going by, the van closes. They literally could have driven by the moment that there's a dead body in that van. That's so creepy. Yeah. Andrea says, but he got clean, then took her out. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe he did it in the van. Had some stuff on him, right? Left, hiked up, had showers, came back. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. You're right. It doesn't really make sense because then he would just get re-dirty. I don't know. Yeah. He, don't forget everything. He did throttle her. That's like something that's super violent. Yes, we talked with that Cruella that there was a letter. Burn after reading. Very good point, Crimson Rose. Was the campfire to make it look like Gabby was camping solo? Very good point. Very good point. Why the fire next to her body? Exactly. Maybe he wanted to make it look like she was camping by herself, that there was an accident. Maybe he was hoping animals would get a hold of her. No, I think he did it in the van when saw people drive by, so he ditched her body, then he hitchhiked out of there. Possibly. Because was Red, White, and Bethune on the 28th? They drove by on the 28th? We don't have any proof of him hitchhiking to Coulter Bay. Only two drivers on the way back from Coulter Bay. Yeah, they said, they keep saying that it's not connected. And there's no proof of it, so... Yeah, there were so many chances. But hear this out. The miracle of what happened, you know, that finally there's justice anyway, is that they did drive by. In that if the Bethunes did not drive by with that GoPro footage, we wouldn't, there's, I don't even think they would have found her. That's the miracle of what they did. So there was other opportunities for him to get caught, but that was what got him caught. He has her phone in this, Carolyn. Has her phone. And is texting her mom. Cryptic text. Remember he said uh, no service in Yellowstone. They're not even in Yellowstone. 
And she was only in underwear and a sweatshirt. I did not know that, actually. She was only in her underwear and a sweatshirt? Is that true, everybody? There were drag marks outside of the van. Is there, I don't know if that's been proven. He had her Apple Watch, too. Exactly, he did, yes. He did go to Coulter Bay because he hitchhiked from Coulter Bay. He may have been freaking out in the people's car because he left her body in the van and was wanting to get back to take her, then drive off. Yeah, because remember they took the wrong way and he got freaked out about which way they were going. Yes, exactly. He did not bank on this going viral, that's for sure. Throttled is, again, to strangle with, like, force and, like, movement. It's not just cutting off a windpipe or whatever. It's literally trying to, like, it's anger. It's heated, passionate anger. And he just said he was trying to put over misery. Okay, I'm sorry. Possibly. Yeah, it's possible too. Some people think Brian's not dead. I mean, I think the police have proved that it is him. So. I mean, what else did I have? I had another article here I wanted to read. Yeah, 29th is the 29th is the day. They have his remains. Yes, Brianna, they have his remains. Yeah, I this is I don't know if the sweater and underwear reports are I didn't hear that. This is I'm very surprised I'm hearing it for the first time. If that's the case, then even then his writings are even more of a lie. Why is she out there in her underwear and a sweater? That's why I don't think the FBI will believe anything like this too. And they believe they they came to the conclusion that she was murdered because of likely what she was marrying wearing. There better not be a Brian funeral. <laughs> Dirtalino. <laughs> Dirtalino released the note even though the parents are in legal process. He is sick. But what to what end? He did it on purpose, but what did he think this was going to achieve? Yeah, right? This is it. Jerry, it keeps coming back to this. Funny how the laundry parents found the bag in that notebook within 30 minutes in the thick of a forest. I, I can't get over this that not a lot of people talk about this as much as I do. This is the one thing this whole thing hinges on for me. The parents... Oh, look at this. I took a turn into the densest, thickest part of this brush. Here's the bag that I was in the forest for five to ten minutes with. Nobody talks about that enough. I hope that comes up in this hearing. Yeah, he had their watch, so they couldn't find her. It's so crazy that nobody else talks about this. I hope the lawyers, if it's, this goes to court, I want them to answer this question. How did you find that? You lying dirtbags. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think a handwriting is going to come back positive because I believe what the other person said earlier is that they went camping and came up with this whole thing. That's what I think. It's a civil lawsuit, Brianna. They're suing them for money because it's the only way they can get the truth. The money is not even what they're suing them for. That's just the only way they can get the civil suit going. They had to put a number on it because they want the truth. They're literally suing them to get the truth. They could care less about the money. Yeah. 
Funny how the mother stayed right on the path when dad went in and picked up the bag. No cops. I can't get over this part of this. I cannot get over it. They want discovery. They could care less if they even win this civil. As long as it goes to a case, they don't care if they win or lose. Once discovery happens, once they get these people, they get the answers. That's all they're out for. They're out for justice and answers, right? They don't care if they lose. They don't want the money. They don't care about the money. Someone said, look at the handwriting on Gabby's postcards. Brian could have written on those. Possibly. I don't have copies of that stuff, though. I don't think video is released of that. They need discovery. They need closure. Exactly. Isn't it crazy that you have to sue someone civilly to get answers? Because the justice system's like, wow, too bad. Don't have to say anything. They need to be on the stand and they need to be eviscerated by lawyers. They ha And they have to answer, right? They can't just sit there and not answer. Or can they? I don't know. I'm so upset with this. The fact that his parents were okay with spending some family together and then standing by or standing quiet with their own son. Yeah, that's it. Frankie's right. The fact that they just let him go do this tells us everything we need to know about these people. They didn't even fight for their son. I don't care if you're like, that's your son. Even if your son did the thing and you believe him that it was an accident or whatever. But what it sounds like to me is that they made him say those things because they needed to make something up because he probably just told them the damn truth. Right. But even if that's your, your son's a total narcissistic murderer. Okay. You still fight for your son to like, just get justice and maybe have a life. The fact that they just let him do it speaks volumes. Frankie tower, a plus. This is why, Jojo, this is why this case is so insane. It's not even just about the murder. It's about the parents and the, what they their role in this whole thing. It's We've never seen something like this. Exactly. As a parent, I can never imagine supporting my child to off themselves, no matter the reason. I'll walk with you to the police station. Again, there's justice to be had. He'll likely get life. He'll be out. He's young. I mean, I'm saying there's still a fight to be had, and they just let him go do that. That's just a coward's way out. Ooh. That's when he dropped the flip-flop, when he dragged her from the van to hide her. Mm -hmm. Interesting. no do you think florida will update their laws about parental no those laws are ridiculous as is they shouldn't even be existing so the fact that they still exist now is silly the petito lawyer said he could wrap this up in one day really okay okay red white and bathing saw the van on the 27th okay 27 in the morning because wasn't it 27th on August 27th there were more texts between Petunia and her mother during which her family believes she remains in the Tetons hmm hmm 6 p.m. August 27th. Okay. So, hmm. It's so interesting to me because if this happened the 27th, that makes this really gross because he literally just sat with her dead body for like two days. Anyway. Well, I'm going to be continuing to follow the case. If there's any live coverage, if this does go to a trial, I'm going to live stream that trial if it's available to be done. And we're going to sit there and just, I, I hope with all my heart, 
it goes to a trial so that her parents get the answers they deserve, right? It's insanity that these people just get away with this. It's insanity to me. So. <laughs> I'd rather my son spend life in prison facing consequences allow him to take his life. He didn't deserve the, yeah, he didn't deserve the easy way out. Exactly, Lisa. Exactly. Yep. It, it, here's the thing. He in the letter it says, "Oh, they lost a daughter too," which is such a lie. The Laundries didn't lose a daughter. They didn't say anything. The parents truly loved Gabby. They would have contacted her parents too. They didn't love her at all, at all. Sorry. Yeah, it's been over an hour, guys. I know I got to get to make sure the kids are sleeping because you know they're not sleeping. There's bath night, and you're probably still watching their Disney movies. What's happening? So, thanks for joining me, guys. I'm going to be following this really close this case, and like, let's just hope and pray that this goes to trial um so that there's answers given because there's letters that are still written there's a whole entire book apparently that's still out there that we they haven't released there's so much more we don't know right if i can find if i can find some of brian's writing i will sit there and i'll photoshop it and we can compare letters i'm not a professional but i mean we can take a look at it ourselves if someone has some proof of his writing let, I'll do that in the next video. Just send it me if you have it. That's an interesting thing where you can take a look at ourselves. It's easy enough to zoom in on things and look at different letters and see for ourselves, right? So, um, yeah, the gun was the dad's too. So there you go. Anyway, thank you for joining me tonight, everybody. Roni says hi. Hi. Roni says hi. And we will see you guys next time, right? <laughs> I'll see you guys. Thank you for joining me.